Welcome my gorgeous friends, this is Clever Coding and this is the second video of the programming series we've started of Introduction to C++. So in the last video we just told how to get your IDE ready and just told some basic instruction of Hello World. So in this video we're gonna talk about data types in C++ and also we're gonna introduce some declarations. So before getting started, you're going to have to open your IDE. So I press my dev C++ open, you get your interface ready, and control N to get your untitled one. Now type in the hash include input output stream. This is a header file ne necessary for any kind of C++ code. You have to include this for input and output. And then we write namespace standard. And this is basically a necessary code too uh, for introducing all of the instructions what we have to put later on. And I'll tell you in detail why we need this. Right now we won't need to worry about this instruction. Then there's an int main. And in this int main, you have these two curly braces and a return zero. So basically this is a container. And in this uh, container, you're gonna have to write all your C++ code so that the machine can understand what you want when you want to the computer to do and it executes it in all of this so like the whole thing comes over here so this return zero you're wondering why is this here this is basically a signal that gives the compiler the direction to stop executing more code and this is like the last instruction until the, like your program runs so for instance if i write some kind of code right here like console output and i say hello Oh, got it wrong. Uh, hello, uh, clever coding. And then I write end line. Now this end line indicates that a new line will start uh, where the cursor will blink. And this is semicolon, which is ending every single line in the C++ code. So whenever you finish some kind of line in C++, you always have to end it with this semicolon or else you're going to get an error. So if I save this so like with code three, and then I'm gonna run this using that execute button and run. You're gonna see it's gonna compile and you're gonna see that terminal ring and it's saying, hello, cl clever coding, awesome. So now let's introduce some of the data types in C++. So the first very basic data type is an int. Now int, by the name, you could see it's a short form for integer. And an integer, every data type will be introduced by its name and then we introduce an identifier. Now, I'm giving an identifier like age, okay? Now, age, it could be any kind, it could be any kind of name. And then you give an equal sign, which is the initialization and a value. So I, for instance, I give age 10 and then a semicolon. Now, this could be any kind of name, not only age, you could call it X, you could call it Y, you could call it, uh, you could call it anything like uh, goo, or go or something, whatever you want to call it but you don't you can't start it with numbers and you can't uh, uh, introduce like special characters like these kind of characters inside your identifier but anything else like letters or capital letters they will work so we're gonna put h as 10 and then with variables like we store the value that 10 value will be stored in this identifier called age in the memory and this 10 is basically stored and it's four bytes of memory that's allocated in the computer now for us to see how much uh bytes it's taking in the computer we could do console output and use a function called size of and we write age and when we write age and you give a semicolon no uh notice when i execute this code you're gonna see that four bytes will be executed. One minute. And if I execute, compile and execute. Okay, that's compiled, now I'll run. And you see a four. So that means the four bytes will are stored in the code. Okay, in the beginning, I didn't save it. That's the uh, problem that in the, in the work, but it did work at the end. So, now the next data type we have in C++ is a string. Now st string is by the name is like a string of characters. Like you could have any char character you want. We could say hello 
Now capital letters, and then we write, hello, John. And now this is a string of characters. You will see that there's so many characters. You can see that there's four over here. There's a space that's also a character. Then there's five characters over here, which means that there's 10 characters all together. And then we go write uh, string name, and then we go like console output and give it a name, and then uh, end line it. And when we execute our code, we compile and run. And you're gonna see that it says, hello, John. So that was our string and we did int. Now the other one that's very basic is called the bool. And bool by its short name is a boolean. So a bool could have like, for instance, you have, it has two results, either a true or a false. It could either be a true or it either could be a false. So uh, we put the name, the, the name of the data type, the identifier, like we could say, for instance, is male and the value equal to and the value. So for instance, if I say, there is, are you male? It uh, means like, if you're a male, you're gonna be true. So, and if you're not a male, you're gonna be false. So if I want to print this out, what do you think the console will show? Well, the console will not show the true, uh, the true in words. It's gonna show true as one and false as zero. So when I save this, and we notice when I save that, uh, the, the star that was over here, that disappeared. So that means we saved it and when we compile and run it, you're gonna see a one that will be displayed on the console screen. So that was our bool and we've done string and we've done the basic uh, integer. And along with integers, you have other kind of like float. Now float is like some kind of uh, number you could have like a decimal number where you want more precision you could say you could say two dollars and twenty cents and that's like some precision and then you could like for instance check the size of that uh siz this is the size of function and inside you just put the num and you would check that how much float takes so if i execute guess how much uh, uh should the float take it does i'll tell you that it does take more then it just takes the same amount as the integer. Okay, so after float, you have a double and doubles take more than floats and ints. So double takes an eight bytes. And when we check double, execute, compile and run, we have eight bytes. Okay, nice. So we know how to use data types now and it's fairly easy right now. Uh, they're more like short, you could have short int and short int like one that's uh, relatively smaller than the com uh, four byte int it is smaller uh, for instance it's going to be two bytes and it has like the range is lower and then you have other data types like unsigned int where unsigned meaning like you can't have negative numbers but in the integer you could have so and we use integers for negative and positive numbers but unsigned int only for positive numbers and then other data types will be introduced later on in this series but right now we don't need to like highlight them out and when the need arises we'll talk about them so in the next video we're gonna uh, further elaborate on how we could implement uh, programming logic and uh, we'll do also a practice example so We'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Bye.